Hi, this is Alex Popple. I'm the 4-H agent here in Breckenridge County, part of the UK's College of Ag, Food and Environments Extension Service. And today we're going to be continuing our 4-H science engineering and technology videos uh, by dissecting a Madagascar hissing cockroach. So let's meet our specimen today. We're going to be dissecting uh, the Madagascar hissing cockroach that is, as the name implies, from Madagascar, that large uh, island off the coast of Africa, and they live in that tropical environment. They live on the ground. You can tell that uh, this species is wingless, so they spend their life crawling along the ground, and they're basically the garbage disposal of the rainforest. They eat up and consume and digest uh, all the fallen logs, fruit, and debris, and clean up that forest floor. So they're a beneficial to have in the rainforest. You'll often see them uh, for sale at pet stores around Halloween, uh, Halloween time, and we also have them in our science classrooms at Breckenridge County Middle School as well as here at the Extension Office. And we get to do a lot of fun labs. So I'll be sharing this dissection, which is one of the labs our seventh graders were supposed to uh, get to at the end of the year. So hopefully this way we all get to still enjoy it. So this particular species, it is an insect. It has six legs, an exoskeleton. And like most cockroaches, it has a really cute face that is hidden underneath this hood. Um, so when you're looking at the cockroach from the top down, you actually can't really see its head uh, because this protective hood is covering it and protecting it from predators. So they don't have the best vision, but they're relying on their antenna to sense the world around them, to basically see, smell, taste, touch. And then the other sensory organ that's pretty cool are these cerci, these two little spikes on the back that help detect any movement in the air around the cockroach. So if a predator is disturbing the air by running up behind them, um, those little sensory organs will detect that and that sends a signal to the cockroach brain to run. Um, so those are pretty cool. Uh, so we have the head, we have the thorax where the legs are attached. And then the rest of the body, this back section, is the abdomen. And on this species, you'll often see these little black dots. And close to those black dots on both sides of the abdomen are the spiracles, or the holes that um, open and close and allow air and oxygen in for the insect to breathe. So this insect does not breathe from its head. It actually breathes from its abdomen. So let's get started with the dissection. If you wanna do this at home, you'll just preserve any insect in alcohol, uh, just like this particular specimen has been. You wanna make sure and wear gloves and goggles for safety, and then have some type of tray. I'm using a dissecting tray with a rubber bottle, but you can easily use a styrofoam plate or whatever you have at home. You'll also need some fine scissors, uh, forceps or tweezers, and some pins. So to start off with, I'm gonna pin my specimen in place just to make uh, the insect a little more stable as I'm cutting. So I'm gonna just choose some of the legs and I'm gonna put pins in the fattest part of those legs. There we go. And I'm gonna pin uh, on each side, just making sure that that insect doesn't roll around and move on me while I'm pinning. If you can get in the fat part of the leg, the better. There we go. All right, so I have him nice and stable where he's not gonna roll on me. And I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that insects have this exoskeleton that is in targets, so these little sections that provide it some flexibility. You can actually slide your scissors up underneath those targets. Now I wanna cut on both sides and create a flap that I can peel up, but I wanna avoid those spiracles because I don't wanna cut into the trachea or those tubes uh, that are bringing air in. I wanna be able to see those later in the dissection. So I'm gonna cut just a little um, to the left and to the right of this midline down the middle. So I'm gonna slide my, my scissors underneath one of these targets like so, and then start cutting. And I wanna keep my cuts nice and shallow and kind of cut up as I cut so that I'm not cutting deep and destroying the organs. I'm gonna do that on the same, the same way on the left side. All right. And basically I've created this little flap. You might have to cut the end of your flap off, um, but you should be able to peel it away. Now, unfortunately, a lot of times with insects, the top layer 
which is actually the circulatory system, likes to stick to this flap. I'm gonna stick that pin back in. Likes to stick to that flap, just like it did here. So our heart in our insect is actually a long tube that runs down the middle, and you can see that that tube is uh, stuck to the flap. I do have a really good example in this insect that I've already um, started to dissect, and you can see the heart, that long, thin tube, running down the dorsal surface right there. And the heart does not move oxygen around the insect's body like it does in humans. Instead, this long, thin tube is moving hemolymph or uh, a mixture of nutrients. And insects have an open circulatory system compared to our closed system with a centralized heart, arteries, and veins. Instead, insects have an open uh, circulatory system with a heart that pumps that nutrient-rich hemolymph into the cavity that we'll get into in a little bit. And uh, the organs will just get surrounded by that, those rich nutrients that they need. So the purpose of the circulatory system is not for moving oxygen, but for moving uh, nutrients. And if this insect had wings, that hemolymph uh, liquid that the heart pumps into cavities would also get pumped into what we refer to as the veins of the wings of the insect and basically act like hydraulics in, in uh, let's say, a tractor and help parts move. In the case of an insect, uh, the liquid, that hemolymph, would go into those wing veins and help the wings unfold and help them move around in flight. So the circulatory system is very important for uh, hydraulic purposes as an engineer, uh, but also for moving that nutrient-rich hemolymph around and getting all the nutrients to all the organs um, in that cavity. So that's the first layer, that's the circulatory system. So in this particular species, um, or specimen, I'm sorry, uh, the, that top layer has a lot of fat, so I'm just gonna re remove that out of the way. And then to help me see a little easier, I'm gonna take some pins and just pin down the sides of my insect. Try to open up that view. like so. All right, what we're looking at now after you re remove that layer of uh, the fat body and the heart and uh, you'll probably have quite a bit of fat to remove, then the next layer is actually the digestive system, what we're looking at here. We have the uh, foregut, which includes uh, the mouth and the esophagus running down here into the crop. And then we have the midgut, so after the food's been chewed up up here in the foregut, this midgut is going to start digesting it. And then back here in the hindgut, that's where the nutrients are absorbed, but also waste is excreted. And I'm going to see if I can find some a really cool feature. It's not as easy to see on this specimen. Let's try this other one that I've pinned. So here are our... Um, esophagus runs into the crop, into our midgut. And if you look around, um, there's these little yellow, kind of stringy, almost spaghetti looking things. Those are Malpighian tubules. They're getting rid of all that excess nitrogen in our hissing cockroach, since it does have a very nitrogen rich diet. And it's named after a really famous entomologist. So this is basically the uh, digestive system. And if we go back to the, our first specimen that we've been dissecting, and I lift up on my digestive system, and kind of pull it from side to side, you'll see all these clear tubes that are connecting that outside wall or the exoskeleton to the organs inside. So they're providing some structure, but they're also carrying air and oxygen into the body. Those are actually um, the trachea. So they're connected to the, or, I'm sorry, they're connected to the spiracles out here, and when the spiracles open up and allow air in, the air travels down these tubes and carries the much needed oxygen to all those vital organs. So that's our respiratory system that you can see as I'm tugging on the insect's digestive system. Now if I move that digestive system and the respiratory system out of the way, we're gonna see a really cool feature. I happen to have a female, and I know it's a female because we have an intact Uuthika or egg case. Now this particular cockroach species 
can have about 30 to 60 babies, and she's one of the best uh, mothers in the animal planet, especially when it comes to insects, because uh, she appears to give live birth. But actually, she'll squeeze out that egg case um, and then squeeze in that fertilized egg case into a brood chamber, and she'll basically incubate those eggs uh, until they hatch inside of her, and she'll squeeze out those live nymphs. So it looks like she's giving live birth, uh, but they're actually hatching from eggs inside of her. And I'll be sharing the video of some of our cockroaches um, giving birth so that you can get an idea of what that looks like. Um, but she'll squeeze out about 30 to 60 babies. Um, unlike other cockroaches that will just uh, release that uuthika into the environment and let the babies hatch on their own and, sh and the mother will never see the babies again. This particular species, as I said, she'll incubate those eggs and they'll, uh, they'll birth inside of her and, um, or they'll hatch inside of her. And then once they're born, uh, they'll stay close to her for, um, you know, until they're able to fend for themselves. So she'll protect them and they'll stay very close to her uh, during the early part of their life. All right, so I'm gonna set her egg case aside, and if you were to dissect that and pull that apart, you would see all these individual um, eggs. Just squeeze some more of them out. So it's pretty cool. All right, and then once you remove the digestive system, all the fat, there'll be a lot of um, fat and tissue um, in the body. One of the tips that I like to do in order to see the last layer, the nervous system or the insect's brain, I like to put a pin in the bottom of the insect and stretch it out. And sometimes that helps reveal the brain below. This one's a pretty fatty. So let me see if I can scrape some more of that fat off. There we go. And this tube that you're seeing running down the bottom is that I'm pulling up on. That is actually the brain. It's a ventral nerve cord uh, that we refer to as a brain. So they don't have a centralized brain in their head like you and I do. Um, but they do have neurons that this nerve cord uh, connects to all the organs. So information um, and signals can cross across the entire body. So this is pretty cool. I have a, a really good view of the ventral nerve cord or the brain running along the bottom of this specimen here. All right. So that completes our Madagascar hissing cockroach dissection. We looked at the cardio or the, uh, the heart, that thin tube on the top layer. Then we looked at our digestive system underneath that circulatory system. And then we finished off, um, well, we looked at the respiratory, those trachea tubes, and then we finished off by looking at the ventral nerve cord or the brain. So most insects are a great way to get into dissecting because they are organized in layers and you just keep peeling back layers and discovering uh, new and fascinating parts of their anatomy. Um, so try this at home. Again, you can preserve your own insects and dissect them and learn about how their bodies are similar and different to our own. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at the Extension Office and happy dissecting!